Welcome at Alterbook Pictures, the shared YouTube channel of Alterbook Info and AlterbookKing.de. In the hands on today we've got an Asus UX32VD. An UX32VD R3001V to be specific. This device carries a 13.3 inch display and the maximum thickness of the device is about 18 millimeters which is uh, measured in the back of the device itself. The device has 4 GB of working memory available, contains a 500 GB hard disk drive and an additional SSD cache of 24 or 32 GB. The CPU is an Intel i5-3370U, an ultra-low voltage version with 2 times 1.7 GHz. Graphics are powered by an NVIDIA GT620M with 1 GB of working memory. Furthermore, there is an onboard Intel HD4000 which can be used if you want to do so. The battery service life of this 1.5 kg heavy device is officially announced with 7 hours by ASOS, but in a real life scenario it's more likely to live 5 hours. The price of this device is more or less exactly 999 euros at notebooksbilliger.de. There is another UX32VD with a Core i7 CPU and a full resolution screen at the price of 1099 euro. Also there is an UX32A which has got the same casing with this slight little curve at the front but carries an older Sandy Bridge CPU and the Intel HD 3000. This UX32A, which is not this, uh, but another device, costs about 849 euro. Coming back to this device and starting with the casing, the casing has a valuable appealing. It's got a complete aluminum finish with plastic parts beneath it, which are not visible. It's got a nice touch to it, is well fashioned and has no remarkably or disturbing gaps or similar. The only visible plastic part is this frame around the screen which also feels and looks very good and not cheap at all. Compared to the predecessor, the UX31E, there is no unibody casing here, but the parts of the case are screwed together with really, really tiny torque screws. So we wouldn't recommend trying to um, open it up yourself, but the service will have a much easier time doing its job this way. The display is pretty stiff and firm. For sure we've got a little shaking here but the transverse stiffness is pretty high compared to other 13 inch ultrabooks which were much worse. Overall the device is really sturdy crafted. It is a little thicker in the front which is a crucial change compared to the UX31E um, or the UX31A or UX21A. So we've got a little bigger bulge over here making room for the dedicated graphics card, the GT620M. So let's talk about the ports. The ports are placed on the sides of the device. On the left hand side we've got an USB 3.0 port and a card reader for SD and MMC cards. On the other, the right hand side of the device, we have um, two more USB 3.0 ports and full-size HDMI port as well as a mini VGA port and an audio port combined for headsets. Furthermore, the um, power cord connects here. The power cord holds on to the device um, pretty good. So if you're plugging it in, it's not likely to fall off alone, which is good if you're using the device on the couch you can move a little bit around and uh, the power cord won't fall off. Um, on the other side you can trip over the cable maybe and therefore just rip the whole device off the desk or so, which is um, not too good. So as always that's kind of a two-sided metal over here. 
As usual nowadays, there's a webcam up here and a little indicator side to it showing if the webcam is active or not, um, whether you like it or not. The display made a good impression on us. Um, solely the resolution of 1366 by 7068 isn't too high, so not too much of a screen real estate over here. Really positive is that it is a matte display, so there is almost no reflection um, which enables you to use and work with this device, maybe on the balcony or outside. Um, the picture is really clear and the viewing angle, even if you can't see it too good from the video, the viewing angle really is good. Not too good actually is the touchpad, which is way too sensitive. So in day-to-day -day work, when writing text, you'll select accidentally all text right away when touching the pad. And also the um, multi-touch recognition is way too sensitive. So when you're um, in the browser surfing the web and you have one finger um, laying on the pad down here and another finger touches the pad up here, you'll zoom in right away. But um, the smell functions will be as differential as the usage of the pad from user to user. Another thing about the touchpad is that the left and right button are only separated with this little line visibly, but you cannot feel it. So to distinguish from the left and right button, you have to look down quite often to get the right feeling where the buttons are located. So next up, accessories. Um, besides the power cord we already saw, we've got an adapter from mini VGA to VGA. Um, for a standard VGA port, there wasn't enough space um, besides the HDMI port, but I guess nowadays the HDMI port is more important than a full-size VGA port, and still you got the adapter to use older screens or projectors and beamers and stuff. Furthermore, there is a 100 megabit USB to Ethernet adapter, um, which will be handy. So both adapters come in this little nice bag. There is a proper sleeve um, for the device, doing a good impression. Um, the inside is padded with some kind of fleece and it fits the device really good and will cushion it against smaller shocks. For better protection during transport, you'll need another case. Um, you'll find more infos about other cases on the web pages of Ultrabook King and Ultrabook Info in the accessories section. Here we've got the power cord, which is pretty small and compact, doing a good impression as well. Seems to be kind of a fingerprint magnet, but who cares about the power brick? Um, this brick will get warm during usage, but not too badly. When working with the device, you do not hear the fans um, too much. Except when you're using the device tilted up a little bit like that. Um, in that case, the noise of the vent gets louder because of the loops, which are located on the back here. Um, when you're tilting the device up, the sound will reflect from here and reach your ear much better and appear louder, therefore. But still, the noise is not too annoying, nor the device is super silent. It will depend on your subjective sense again. The keyboard is well crafted. Um, there's a good feedback to the finger. Um, and I really can see me type larger text or assignments on this keyboard. And compared to other Ultrabooks, the gaps between the keys and the positioning of the keys is really intuitive so that you can type larger text without having to watch down constantly. It really feels pretty good. As you can see, the keyboard is backlit. You can deactivate the backlight completely or you can brighten it up. I guess you cannot see it too good because of the lightning. But you can turn it off completely 
as you can see right now. The sound from the speakers up here and the sides here um, is really, really good. As in the UX31A, there is a Bang & Olufsen ice power built in. Alright, um, conclusion. The device overall is well done. Um, this is a mid-class device, not a beginner, not a high-class model. For the price, you get absolutely everything you can expect. You got the new Ivy Bridge CPU and dedicated video card, which makes it suitable for gaming. Especially the display is really good if you don't need the full HD resolution. On the other hand side, the touchpad is the biggest weakness and further details on the UX32 VD you'll see in following videos. We hope you'll enjoy. Bye bye.